Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'da. Habatifillah continue on in our study of basic fiqh, of tahara, and salat. We reach a very important bab or chapter, and that is tayammum. And tayammum, this is the dry ablution, meaning that you're using clean earth instead of using water for wudu, in the place of wudu, or in the case, uh, in the case of uh, purification, whether that be from hadith al-asgar o akbar, whether that is the major impurity or the minor, so in case, in the place of uh, wudu or the place of ghusl, and we'll see the conditions uh, for doing so. <clears throat> so purification when water, when being in either states of ritual impurity is obligatory, okay, so water is the asl. We have to use water for a Muslim as long as the water is available, of course. However, in some cases, either water is unavailable or one is unable to use it due to a legal excuse. For example, injury. And I think we talked about this before, about a Sahabi, radiallahu who was killed, uh, you know, who died because he used water uh, and he had, you know, serious infection or, or something like this. A head injury in the water was the cause of his uh, demise. So, however, in some cases, either water is unavailable or one is unable to use it due to a legal excuse. Legal excuse meaning that which, which is mashroor, that which is legal according to the shara. Uh For that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, out of his grace and mercy, has kindly provided a substitute, namely, tayammum, with clean earth. <coughs> Uh, and this is uh, making taysir, making it easy upon us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kitab al Karim, O you who believe, when you rise to perform prayer, wash your faces and your forearms to the elbow, and wipe over your heads and wash your feet to the ankles. And if you are in a state of janaba, then purify yourselves. But if you are ill or on a journey, or one of you comes from the place of relieving himself, or you have contacted women, meaning haven't. Uh, relations and do not find water, then seek clean earth. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned, and do not find uh, water, then seek clean earth and wipe over your faces and hands with it. Allah does not intend to make difficulty for you, but He intends to purify you and complete His favor upon you that you may be grateful. And that's Surah Al Ma'idah, verse 6. <clears throat> so linguistically, <coughs> the word tayammum in Arabic means uh, intention. And legally, according to Islamic rules, according to the shar, uh, aside from the linguistic term, as a sharia-based term, uh, it means wiping over the face and hands with clean earth in a specific way. Tayammum is stated in the Noble Qur'an, prescribed in the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, and approved by consensus. Uh, tayammum is a privilege what Allah, uh, which Allah, out of His grace and mercy, has specified for the purity of the nation of the Prophet ﷺ in order to make things easy for them. Uh, in Sahihain, in uh, Bukhari and Muslim, uh, it was related that the Messenger of Allah ﷺ said, I have been granted... Uh, by Allah, five things, which were not granted to anyone else before me. Uh, and they are, Allah made me victorious by frightening my enemies for a distance of one month's journey. The second, the earth has been made for me a masjid, meaning a clean place of prayer, and a means of purification. That's tayammum. So any one of my followers can pray anywhere whenever the time of prayer is due. So this is a very important hadith in Bukhari and Muslim. So tayammum and its evidence for tayammum. Uh, tayammum is a substitute for purification with water in case one is legally unable to use it. <coughs> purification with tayammum also enables a Muslim to perform all acts of worship that require ablution with water, such as prayer, tawaf, uh, I mean going around the Kaaba, uh, reciting the Quran. This is because tayammum has been decreed by Allah 
as a legal substitute for purification with water. The Prophet wasallam said, and its clean earth has been made as a purifying means for us. So that's another uh, evidence for tayammum. Uh, the cases in which tayammum is a substitute for water, okay, as far as purification. So the first case <clears throat> is when water is unavailable. You do not have any water. So when one finds no water, water, whether one is at home or on a journey, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and do not find water, then seek clean earth. And that's from the ayat in Surah Al-Ma'idah. <clears throat> the second case, so we said the first case is if you have no water. Okay? The second case is availability of water. You have water, but it's insufficient. It's not enough. So when the available water is enough only for drinking, cooking, and such necessities, and purification with water might cause it to run out when it is needed to quench the thirst uh, of, of yourselves or your family or your animals. Your animals are going to die. So it shows the mercy of Islam towards the animals likewise. That, that should be something of concern. So if you don't have enough water to, you know, to to drink and quench your thirst, you know, you're, it's going to cause you hardship or great difficulty, then uh, tayammum is legislated under that circumstance, those circumstances. So that means if you don't have enough water. Um, <coughs> another scenario that falls under that, the sheikh doesn't mention, but it's it's under this availability of water, but insufficient. For example, if you have a limited amount of money, you're on a budget and your money is really limited, or you only have enough uh you know to buy your water to drink or you have drinking water and you have some money but if you buy this water to make wudu with it you know you're gonna have to buy a certain amount of water to make wudu that is going to be uh you know cause a great hardship or you're gonna run out of money or something like this so again tayammum is mishroor under those circumstances the third scenario or the third the third scenario uh, for for tayammum is if there is the probability of harm meaning uh, harm to you by using water so when purification with water might cause harm due to an illness or cause the delay of one's recovery or the like uh, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to Kitab al-Kareem but if you are ill then seek clean earth okay in, in Surah Al-Ma'idah verse 6 so that also lets us know that if it's going to cause, increase your sickness, an illness that you have, or it can actually result in your death or like major infection or something, then under those circumstances, you make tayammum. So that shows the, the mercy and the taysir of the deen, the ease with, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it for us to still purify ourselves, still worship him alone, tabarak wa ta'ala. The fourth case scenario, <clears throat> this is when, uh, or, or we mentioned the, uh, no, the inability to use water due to illness. So I kind of actually put those together. So when one is unable to use water <clears throat> due to an illness that prevents one from moving to get to water, and there is nobody to help him perform ablution, so one fears to miss performing prayer at its due time. So because of some illness, you're restricted, you're bedridden, and you can't get to water. Okay, maybe there's a sink. Maybe there's a sink in a bathroom. But you cannot uh, get there. So this is why you find in the hospitals here, in some, prob in some of the Muslim lands anyway, they actually have like a pot of uh, dirt or clean earth in there for people to make tayammum. Or they, they will facilitate that anyway. Yeah. And so... Uh, and so, and that's for just that, such a scenario. Like the fifth scenario, the fifth scenario, <clears throat> the fear of catching a cold. Okay. So we mentioned the, about the serious illness that keeps you, prevents you from moving to the water, getting to the water. And then we also mentioned about the probability of it being a harm to you 
by using water. And this last one is the fear of catching uh, basically uh, the flu, you know, or something, a serious cold or something. Uh, when one fears the harm of catching a cold, if one purifies oneself with water, provided one is able to heed it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning provided one is unable to heed it, you know, one doesn't have the ability. So, for example, uh, obviously, in some places, because the temperatures are so cold, freezing cold, okay? And maybe, depending on your health situation, there's a good probability you're going to catch a cold by using that cold water and you live in a very cold place. You don't have heat or you have limited heat or whatever the case may be. So if you are fearful of actually getting sick and catching uh, you know, a cold in this situ situation and you have no way to heat that water, then you can make uh, it's mishroor to make tiyamu. Everybody's okay. So that was five different scenarios. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fikitab al Kareem, and this is the general evidence for that. And do not kill yourselves. And this is in Surah Al Nisa, verse 29. So, in any of the aforementioned cases, one can perform tayammum and offer prayer. In addition, if water is enough only to wash some of the organs of ablution, so this is very important because this scenario happens, you have limited water and you can only wash some of your body uh, with the, the uh, for wudu. One can use it and then perform tayammum for the rest of the organs. Okay? Uh, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi kitab al-kareem, ittaqullah mistata'tum. Fear Allah as much as you are able. Uh, moreover, if there is a wound that hurts if it is washed or wiped over, one can perform tayammum for that wound and continue perform, performing ordinary ablution uh, for the rest of the organs. For Allah the Exalted uh, says, and do not kill yourself. Uh, also the same evidence. However, if wiping over the bandage of the wound with water does not hurt or cause any harm, it is sufficient for one to wipe over the bandage instead of wiping over it with clean earth. Okay? Meaning the tayyumum. Um, it is permissible to perform tayyumum with clean earth, wa water that is, um, I mean, uh, earth that is uh, salty or what have you, has other properties, sand, <clears throat> uh, in any kind of clean earth, according to the the strongest view uh, amongst the the scholars, and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala mentions, then seek clean earth, and this is the the evidence in general for that uh, in Surah Al Maida. When it was time for prayer, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his companions, Aradi Allah Taala used to perform tayammum wherever they performed prayer. Uh, when water was unavailable, using earth or anything of the kind, they never took clean earth with them every uh, in order to use it. So if they didn't find water, they just used the earth. They used whatever they could. Uh, so this lets us know that you can use also, it doesn't mean you have to go outside to the ground. Uh, you can use the walls, you know, if they have a little bit of dust or something like this. I mean, it doesn't. you don't have to see the dust, but it, it's just... You can use dust, um, you know, you know, so on the surface of something, these books, some of these books have dust on them, things like this. Uh, you can use that for tayammu, okay? So how to perform tayammu? This is very important. So when performing tayammu, one strikes the earth with one's hands while parting one's fingers, okay? Then one wipes over one's face with the palm of one's hands and wipes over the hands with the palms of one's hands, uh, provided both the face and the hands are wholly wiped over. Okay. Uh, it is permissible to strike the earth twice, wiping over the face after the first strike and over the hands after the other. However, the former way of performing tayammum is that which is authentically narrated on the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Another point I want to mention, uh, Imam Fozan doesn't mention in his book, because his book is meant to be 
you know, just how to practice. He's giving you what he feels is the strongest view and keeping it simple. That's why the book is called Malachis Fiqiyah, you know, the summarized fiqh. So he made it very easy so the common Muslims could pick up his book and really benefit and hopefully be able to practice. A point I uh, want to mention that some of the scholars mention because there is a text, because we have a hadith in Sahih Muslim where the Prophet ﷺ said, فَضَرَبَ الْأَرْضِ ثُمَّ نَفَخَ فِيهِمَا وَمَسَحَ بِهِمَا or كَمَا قَالَ النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ So the Prophet ﷺ, he mentioned, uh, in this hadith, it was mentioned about the Prophet ﷺ in Sahih Muslim, so it's an authentic hadith, that he hit the earth uh, and then he blew in his hands. فَنَفَخَ and then he wiped his face and his hands. Okay, so that hadith shows us that it's also mishroor. Okay, although probably the most common view, and I and I will say because I think that hadith we we only have in that hadith, but other hadith is not mentioned the blowing. So this is why m many of the scholars, you know, they don't uh, mention blowing in the hands you know they say you know that's you know uh a rare scenario or it's you know not as strong anyway as the all the other ahadith which do not mention that so i just wanted to to mention that because we have a hadith in sahih muslim uh things nullifying tayammum so now what does what breaks your tayammum so <clears throat> first whatever minor ritual impurity nullifies will do uh, nullifies tayammum. So whatever breaks your wudu breaks your tayammum because it's it's a type of tahara. There's also ikhtilaf with the ulama about with regards to the concept of tayammum and, and we'll see if uh, Imam Fozan mentions about it. Um, whatever major ritual impurity which necessitates ghusl, of course, uh, the similar similar to the way of uh, wudu. Uh, and then a third thing which nullifies your tayammum is when water is found. Okay? Meaning that if you were in a situation where at first you couldn't find water and you prayed and then maybe some time lapsed and then you come across, it, across a stream. So uh, Imam Fozan is saying that then that breaks your tayammum. Okay, that nullifies your tayammum and then you are required to make wudu for your next prayer. Um, <clears throat> the fourth scenario or thing which nullifies your tayammum is when there is no longer a legal excuse such as illness and the like. So you become healthy or what have you. So he's saying that this actually uh, nullifies your tayammum. If one finds neither water nor earth or is unable to use either, it is permissible for one then to perform prayer with neither ablution nor tiyamu. Okay, For Allah does not charge a soul except with that within its capacity. You know, uh, And one also is not legally required to re-perform such a prayer for one. Thus, by adopting easiness, uh, in the acts in accordance, accordance with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's commands, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, so fear Allah as much as you are able. So uh, just to make that clear, so he says, if if you don't find water or earth, and, and it's time for the prayer, you have to pray, you know, the time, meaning the time is going to go out, or you're in some rare situ scenario, maybe you're in prison, Okay, you're imprisoned or the enemy has captured you and you, you're you tied or whatever the case may be, then, uh, of course, then you pray under your your state. You know, you, you should, if you're able to look for water, for example, if you're hiking, okay, you should look if, if there's known to be rivers close by or something, you should look. And uh, But if the time is rare, I mean, the, the time is narrow before prayer is going to be over or what have you. Of course, you can just make tayammu, okay? And yes, so that I think that that covers that scenario more or less. Uh, furthermore, the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said, 
If I command you to do something, then do it as much as you can. Thus, we have explained to you a summary of the rulings on Tayammum, and if you are doubtful about any of them or any other rulings, you urgently have to consult Ahlul Ilm. And so that's Jazallah uh, Khairan to the Sheikh, uh, what he had to say about Tayammum. And as he mentioned, this is a summary of the rulings because there's so much extensive other details, but this gives you a base that you know how to make tayammum and when it's mishroor, when it is, you know, legislated and permissible, because sometimes some of the things don't know. As the sheikh, he mentioned that if you're afraid, you're going to get a cold, you know, because sometimes you have ice cold water. I've been in countries where ice cold water and it's time for fajr, okay? And, you know, or and if you have to make ghusl especially, or when traveling, you know, when you're traveling, sometimes you you have limited water or you're outside and you have to pray outside, you know, and by getting wet with the water, you can easily get really sick, you know, catch a, a really bad cold or what have you. So that it's good to know these ahkam for the takhfif. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the almighty, to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Muhammad.